Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back. This is going to be the season transfer, season opener special. Uh, we may or may not play a match today. Uh, what I want to do is because we're now 41 years into the future. Remember, I simmed ahead 30 years before I started this save. And now we're into the 11th year of the save. So last... Uh, over the weekend, I asked you guys for some help, and I got some feedback, and I do appreciate that. Uh, so one guy said, hey, I think I'd stay at Carl Scrona and just see what happens. So that's a vote. Uh, another guy said, uh, you know, and I'd asked about my manager's age. That's why I'm on my profile screen. Um, and he says, I don't think age has anything to do with it. In his save, Roy Hodson is about 105 years old managing Crystal Palace in the premiere uh, with the updates and a reboot. While the updates and a reboot might be good, it looks like you've had a better season and things could be getting good to see if it continues to get better at Carl Scrona. Uh, so that's two votes for Carl Scrona. And then uh, another person said, I'd do a reboot uh, option one, which is a complete reboot, start over again. He suggested starting off in South America. Probably wouldn't have done that because I did a South America save last year. Uh, so if you do want to see some South American football, I did a South American journeyman last year. Go check that one out. Um, so, you know, I'd been kind of thinking about it. and I, You know, I did want your input. So uh, we had a couple of votes to stick at Carl Scrona, one vote for a, a reboot. So we're going to stick at Carl Scrona at least for another season just to see what happens. Oh. Uh, off topic a little bit, one of the guys, uh, Custard Prophet, and thanks for chiming in, uh, he suggested that the 30-year vacation, for lack of a better word, because I vacationed for 30 years to move the game ahead, um, stagnated my my uh, my guy, my, my coach. And so that could be what's causing the reputation problem. Um, anyway, we're going to see if we can continue to do good with Carl Scrona. I am kind of attached to some of the players. We're starting to kind of turn the corner, I think. Um, if we take a look at uh, job history here. Uh, so we started off in Division One and finished third. Gained promotion by winning the league the second year. Finished second in the Super Raton our first season, which was automatic promotion. Uh, barely hung on in the Alvin Scott. Our first season finished 13th, and last year we finished solidly in the upper half of the table in 7th position. So the goal this year is uh, mid-table and to reach group stage in the Cup, which we actually reached the quarterfinals, so we did good there. Uh, I'm doing a couple of different things. We'll get into that. So again, we're going to look at transfers, but I wanted just to kind of, because we are 41 years Let's go back and just take a look around a little bit. Let's take a look at the Premier League. So this is last season, or the current season it looks like. Uh, Liverpool uh, topped the league. Norwich, wow. Arsenal, Chelsea, Wolves, Man United, Man City rounding out the top seven. Good to see Leeds up in the Premier. Hope to see them there for real next year. Uh, Everton, Leicester, uh, Huddersfield, okay. Southampton, Reading, Brighton got re uh, in relegation. Brighton's already been relegated with 13 from 32. Tottenham struggling. Fulham's in there. Uh, just out of curiosity, so who's in the championship? So we got West Ham down there. Swansea, Middlesbrough, Millwall, Crystal Palace back in there. QPR, West Brom. Sheffield United, Aston Villa, okay, down towards the bottom of the table. So just wanted you guys to be able to kind of look around a little bit. Derby County down into League One. They, they have reached the playoffs at least. Stoke, Shrewsbury, Hull City. Wow, so Hull City's been struggling, it looks like. All right. And, uh, you know, you can, you can look through those scoring numbers. Again, all these are, are fictitious players. Uh, but let's see. If we go back up to the Premier Records, that's what I want to do. Uh, let's see. So most points in a season, 100. And so 
the reason I went ahead 30 years was to have that history because when you start a game, it doesn't bring in the past history, which I kind of don't like. I wish it, I wish it would. So this is from day one, but 2017, 18, 100 points, uh, 27 wins for Arsenal, uh, biggest win, a 9 nothing win, Man United over Ipswich Town. Most team goals, Aston Villa, 128 in the 30-31 season. Blackpool gave up 125 in the same year. Player records, a 60-goal season for Dixie Dean of Everton in the 27-28 season. Wow, 60 goals, that's sick. Five in a match, Chris Brown with 21 assists for Wolves just a few years ago. 2055-56. 20, 22 clean sheets for Chelsea. An 808 uh, AR, uh, highest AR over 33 appearances by Filippo Procucci of Liverpool in 2051, so 10 years ago. 18 player of the matches for Daniel Fletcher of Arsenal. Oh, I guarantee we have we have the worst discipline. Youngest player, Derek Foster of Sunderland, 1964. So that is an existing record. Okay. Probably, would you ever expect that record to get broken in this day and age? I would think not. Oldest player, 50 years and five days. I'm thinking that won't get broken either. Eight seconds. That must have been, that's a real life goal, I think. Youngest goal scorer back in 1984, oldest in 1921. So anyway, just wanted you guys to see some stats, uh, current reputations, Premier League, Bundesliga, Liga Santander, uh, Syria, Ligue 1, Scottish Premiership, Liga Nos, uh, Tips 3, Bundesliga in Austria, round out the top eight. And if we go there... Then we have the Jupiler Pro League in Belgium, uh, the Premier League in Russia, and Spore Toto Super League in Turkey. So uh, anyway, that's what we're dealing with there. A uh, couple of things on the home front. We uh, asked the board, our value's up to $4.66 million. We actually have moved into a national reputation. We uh, did a improvement to our training facilities, so they are now adequate. Dog hair. Uh, finances are still okay, so we are playing well. Uh, I am favored personnel along with Karsten Badge and Oscar Lang. Speaking of Oscar Lang, where is he at? He's at Vesterius, uh, valued at one and a half thousand. And let's see, Angle Holmes, he only had three appearances. No goals, no starts, no goal, no starts, two uh, reserve appearances. Moved on a free to Vesteris, two starts, six relief appearances off the bench with one goal. And this year, two relief appearances. Playing, he's playing okay, but he has not, uh, has not found the form of uh, that magical season he had for us in 2057. I think we moved off of him at the right point. Uh, Karsten Badge, he just moved off last year, correct? Yeah, to Viborg for eight and a, eight and a quarter thousand. He's uh, six starts, 11 relief appearances, four assists, one player of the match. Playing a 6-6-4, six, six, which is well off almost a full point off of what he averaged for us. So uh, very strange. We may have moved off of him at the right point as well. Uh, let's see. So the facilities got upgraded. Um, didn't get any job interest this year. Nobody approached me for an interview or anything. Uh, taking a look at our schedule in the early going, uh, we, we've done okay in the friendlies. I, I played five different tactics. So none of my tactics, unfortunately, are going to be really ready to go heading into the season because I was trying a lot of different things. Uh, we did okay. We had a couple of big wins uh, over teams that we should have beaten. Over in Group 8, uh, we ended up uh, winning two, drawing one in three matches and getting advanced out of the group stage. Uh, so that was good. And in the quarterfinals... 
uh, we lost 2-0 to Malmo. So I figured I would lose that. I did play a brand new tactic. We had never played it before. We didn't play badly, just uh, didn't compete. Nor coping, surprisingly, beat Hammerby. Uh, so that happened in the Cup. Uh, the friendlies went well. Uh, we're going to open the season with Sunsvall and Elfsberg. Again, I don't know if we're going to get to a match today. It depends on how long this takes. And even with the transfers, we usually only do one match anyway. So let's get into the transfers. Uh, by the way, one of uh, my viewers, one of you guys, asked a question not long ago. Uh, let me look for it here real quick. Oh, uh, LFC Taz commented, <clears throat> what's going on? Did you actually buy better players than you already had? Wow, did you get a new coaching badge? This far into the series, I'm used to you replacing crap with crap. Uh, but you've managed to buy at least three players better than you had last season. Loving the series, bud. Thanks for the uploads. And even if you're joking, never call the beautiful game soccer, please. Well, I did mention I'm an American. Can't guarantee that that won't slip out on accident. I try hard, though. I try hard. Give me something for effort. <laughs> and yes, I think we have been signing better players as we've been going up. We talked about that a little bit because you can see we've got a lot of guys with four-star ability, four-and-a-half-star potential, and really has driven down uh, a lot of the guys that were four four stars for us, like Selenius. Now is just a three-star because of the overall makeup of the team. You can see some of our salaries, over well over $100,000. Uh, Alvin, Alvin Gunners just signed a new deal for $199,000 a year. Uh, finances, we're spending $3.2. Uh, we've got about $350,000 left. We haven't really touched the transfer budget. Not really anybody was available. So speaking of transfers, let's take a look at them. Let's look at our released players, first of all. Uh, Gustav Gustafsson, uh, he was our keeper when we first started with the club. He left. Kevin Hallen, uh, he was our starting center back. He just wasn't very good. And as we moved up in uh, the two, two divisions, he just couldn't even play. We put him out on loan last year. He didn't play there, and we let him go. Adam Erickson left on a free, and Eric Holm, a couple of guys that we had bought, um, just... Again, they, they just, you know, we outgrew them big time. So moving into the transfers, we actually sold some players, $3,500. Uh, Anders Krona, uh, he was, uh, you know, he was a young kid, 18-year-old winger. Not too bad, but not, you know, not anything special. I felt he was expendable. Come on. Uh, Jimmy England, we sent him out on loan. This is not the England that we bought last year. This is a kid in our youth system, another winger. Uh, hoping he develops a little bit, but not holding my breath. Uh, Marcus Gustafson went out on loan. We were just trying to get rid of his salary, basically. Uh, we've had him listed, I think, for two or three seasons now, and nobody will make a, make a deal on him. So we're just trying to cut his wages. Uh, when his contract's up next year, I'll probably let him go. Joseph Ekstrom also goes to Fleck Array on loan. Philip Lindbaum, we finally uh, got hit, got rid of him. Uh, again, very, very good player for us. He had that 23-goal season a couple of years ago. Uh, 10 goals in 27 starts. He, he was injured a little bit that year, but still played really well. And then last year, just never could get on the pitch. Uh, as we kind of outgrew him. And uh, you saw in the Alabanskan, he, he, his ratings dropped off. So we let him move to Whistler Plock on a free, and we're able to get rid of his wages as well. Um, Jonas Peterson, we sell him to Hassel Holmes for $2,300. Uh, he is an 18 year old pro uh, prospect. Only a 17%, so I didn't feel I was losing anything. He could play a lot of positions, and he is Swedish. But we were able to get a little bit of money, about double his value, so we went ahead and took that. Jonas Bingston, we just sent him out on loan. Cameron Clunan on loan, uh, again, to get rid of their salaries for the year. Just trying to limit you know, wages and get a little more profitability if we can. Coming in, Jonas B Bingston, uh, we did send him out on loan, so he is a future prospect. Uh, you can see he is, once we get there, hello, click, click. 
Oh, I don't know why it won't do that when I when they're on loan. It's like I can't look at their stuff. Oh well. Yeah, only two star. Um, don't know why I signed him. Uh, he played mid. Oh, I know why I signed him. I, I remember now. Uh, defensive mid. He had he had a lot of the ratings for it, you know. So we I was looking to strengthen that position. Turns out we were able to strengthen it some other ways, and so we let him move on. Uh, Michael Driscoll from Geisley, uh, eighteen thousand dollar acquisition, an eight uh, twenty two year old Irish striker. Uh, you can see he's got three goals in four cup matches, playing a 7-8-2. Uh, he had 29 goals in 63 matches for Geisley, 11 in 36 for Mickelover. So a uh, very, very physical player. Uh, can't head the ball very well, but he has solid first touch, great finishing, should be our key striker, and uh, four-star potential. Very excited to get him in. So decided to drop a chunk of change on him. Uh, for 2200 we bring in Marcus Larson. Uh, he's valued at 3700 He's making 88000 a, uh, a year. And he's a 26-year-old Swede with three-star potential. Right fullback, uh, and he could play wing back, and he could also fill in at the right mid-wing if, if we need him to. Good pace, good acceleration, good. He can play defensive from a marking standpoint, not so much tackling. He has decent crossing, but he's a fringe player. He's depth for us, so we didn't spend a lot of money. But when you when I find um, you know, we've we've seen if you find a Swedish player because we have certain roster requirements, it's a good thing to grab them if you can. Uh three hundred thousand dollars, right? Victor Seeger comes to us from Malmo. He's a 22-year-old Swede, uh, very, very good physicals, four-and-a-half star potential, left winger, which was a weakness for our club. He's actually a left footer. He can drop back and play the left, uh, left back position as well. Crossing, dribbling, first touch, passing. He's solid in all of these, very good work rate. And he's got one goal in three cups, uh, uh, three cup matches, uh, one player of the match, and then four goals in two friendlies with one player of the match playing very well. Uh, he's shown some ability to put the ball in the net. Only a six finishing. That's the same that Lindbaum had. Uh, let's see. Rickart Stinkist. Uh, he comes to us. Another 22-year-old Swede. Four-star potential. Three-star current. Uh, another striker. And this is another reason we wanted to get rid of Lindbaum. Uh, 14 pace, 16 acceleration, solid composure and everything in the middles. Uh, first touch is solid. Finishing is average, but that's pretty good for a, you know for this level, right? For a Swedish player, so he's going to be a reserve uh, striker for us, especially playing a one one up top uh, system. Uh, Ricard Bjork from on Copings, he comes to us on a free. He's going to be our reserve keeper. Nothing special, can't kick the ball very well, but decent handling in one-on-ones, aerial reach. Uh, so 27 years old, again, he's Swedish, so we said, yeah, we can you know, use him to fill a, a, a homegrown role for us. Uh, Nico Calio comes to us on a free from MIPA. Uh, he's valued at $120,000, so uh, two and a half star ability. Left wing, just depth, crossing, dribbling, solid, first touch. Physicals, you know, it's kind of what I go for is I go for physicals and then I look to see if they're at least average in stuff that I need them in. So he can do the job. He's played well in the friendlies. He's made six appearances, three goals and an assist. So we'll see how much he plays. We're still working out the, the depth charts and everything. Uh, we actually went to Hammerby and picked up Joseph Olander on a free. You know, if you're going to try to compete with the top clubs, go after their players. This was a guy that they released. Uh, that he couldn't make their bench squad or or their reserves. That's scary as hell. Five star potential has a little bit of room to develop uh, to get up there. Twenty one year old Swede striker. Again, very good physicals. Fourteen finishing, fifteen heading. He's six feet tall, thirteen jumping reach. So he can he can do a job. Four goals and four starts. Playing a seven five two in the friendlies. He made one relief appearance off the bench in a cup match. So that's three strikers that we added. 
Uh, Roberto Nocera, he came in on a free as a free agent. He's a 20-year-old Swede, four-and-a-half star potential, two-star current, right winger, backup striker. Again, pace, acceleration, agility. He can cross the ball and stuff without like looking like a complete idiot. Uh, passing his average, that's another thing I like to find is people that can pass the ball. Off the ball, 11. Work rate's a little low, but composure, decision-making. So I think he'll be depth for us as well. And the last guy, Jimmy Hellstrom. And uh, he comes from Lucis Liber Libertas, uh, Libertaris, I don't know, $54,000. About double his value. He's already wanted, uh, oh, on loan. Uh, four and a half star potential, 20 years old. Again, a couple of these guys were just guys that I got for the potential, knowing that we were improving our training facilities. So the hope is that we can actually start to see them reach that potential, which is a concern. Uh, he is a striker, number 10 naturally, but he can play the wings. And I think if he can play these attacking wings, he can come back and work in the midfield uh, on both sides. Now he is left footed. He'd have to play an in, inside uh, winger, but uh, I think he could do the job out there. Again, pace, acceleration, very good physicals, first touch, free kick taking, um, dribbling's okay. So he's a well rounded kid, looks pretty solid so far. And again, just hoping that with the, you know, improvement to training, that we'll see him reach his potential. All right, well, let's go ahead and try. Oh, yeah, let's go ahead and look at uh, tactics when we get into the match. We'll try to get one match in today. We're going to open with Suns Ball. Uh, let's see. So we're road favorites. We beat them once. So these are the tactics that we've been working on. I have brought in, uh, this is the tactic we played last year. Uh, so, and this is actually, you know, and you've no, probably noticed I, I do download tactics because I'm not a tactical genius. Uh, so this is from Nap. I'm sure most of you guys know who Nap is, but this is one of his uh, updated tactics for 2.3.9 uh, or 20.3.9. Same one we played last year, just an updated version with a couple of tweaks to it. Uh, this is one that I have had some success with. This is just a straight Gagan press, and this is not a downloaded. This is one of the pre-existing that you just choose in-game. So the only thing that I've done is uh, I've dropped the line a little bit and uh, I've I haven't asked them to do anything else. So this is as is and we've done pretty well with it. And then the third tactic is another downloaded tactic uh, from NAP. Uh, it's a three, I don't know, a, a three, four, three or four, three, three or I don't. I don't know what it's called. A 3-4-3. Three, three. That's what he calls it. So three back players, two wing backs, two midfielders, uh, two advanced forwards on the inside, and then a pressing forward up top. So the reason I went with this is because we're typically pretty solid at center back. I think that gives us some better defense. It also puts in wingers that we're trying to use in this tactic. And it allows us to have two true central midfielders like this tactic, uh, because the other tactic that we were playing here, we're pretty limited on guys that can play defensive mids. So um, we are favored. I'm going to go with this tactic because, again, this is the one that we've been having some success with. So I want to use that one the most, at least here in the early going. So we're going to be looking at Kostman in goal, Dietert and Pallison in the center, center backs. Seeger is going to drop back to the left back here with Coco in the attacking position. Uh, Christian Larson on the right, Marcus Larson in the wing back position. Gunners and Evans, real solid pairing there. Jacobson in the deep lying playmaker and Driscoll up top. Now, Jacobson has an 11 passing, so he can do the job there. Um, let's see, Roche. Now, Thompson will be in there regularly. Stenquist is injured, but Thompson will be in there a lot. Uh, he's suspended for the next match. That's a carryover from the end of last season. Uh, Pison, uh, not on the bench right now. Uh, we do have Selenius. Is that who I want there? 12, 14, I don't know. Let's see. 
Let me just check their histories. He had 12 and 29, 8 and 21. Yeah, I think I think Selenius is the guy that I want up there. Let me just double check here. So we've got two strikers. Not sure I need that. I got a defensive left. Defensive left and center. I think I'm gonna take I think I'm gonna take Olander off. You know what? I'm gonna keep Olander on. I'm gonna take Selenius off. And then let's bring on a he's at 89%. I do like Georgievich. He can play center back or that defensive mid. Victor's still coming back from his injury last year with his spinal injury, so he's going to be out for a while. Uh, we've got to get him up to fitness. Mid and attacking. You know what? I really want to try to give him some game time. Now, Thompson... But Thompson's pretty solid. Oh, he's suspended, so he'd normally be in there. Can we put him in? Will will it work? I'm just not sure how many people that gives me. But let's go with that. See if we can knock this match out for you guys. Hopefully we get off to a good start. All right, encourage the team. Morale's pretty solid. And... We are off. All right, set piece. Gunners plays it high. Coco with the first goal of the season. Michael O'Driscoll, the striker, headed it down right in front of the goal. Beautiful assist by the striker. Coco gets us off the mark. Fourth minute of the game. Very nice job. O'Driscoll went up, put it right to the back post. Coco couldn't miss that one at all. Four shots, three on target. And a clear-cut chance. We're looking good early on. I am liking this tactic. I don't know, you know, I don't know why it works. I can't explain any of that. Uh, we just did have some success with it. Uh, O'Driscoll, a bruised ankle. All right, he is getting better. But you know what? Let's sub him off. It's pretty low. Um, so we're going to go with, uh, you know what? I got Albin Gunners. Yeah, but he doesn't have the finishing. Yeah, let's go with Olander. All right, Gunners puts it in. That one's headed away. Some quick one-two passing. We go back outside to Gunners. He brings it back again. I don't know what that cat's doing. Jacobson gets a little tricky with his passing. There's a deep ball into the corner for Coco. He crosses it back. Gunners pings it. What a save by the keeper. Gunners hasn't seen a shot that he doesn't like. All right, there's our sub off there for O'Driscoll. Really hate seeing him have to come out already, but... Oh, I, I don't know. Was that in? I saw the net ripple. Oh, uh, they're, they're going to counter here. Oh, no, taken away. Good hustle by Larson. Jacobson. Gunners gets it around. Oh, there's a deep ball. Larson drifts out to corral it. There's a cross in. Comes back out. We'll get the throw in here. So still holding on to that slim 1-0 advantage, but that's as dominant a half as I think you could have. 70% possession, 16-0 to 0 on shots, 50% on target. I think we are go doing well. Let's be uh, assertive. Uh, we've got a guard against complacency. We've got a, three guys playing in the sevens. And Evans has a foot injury as well. He's only at 81%. I did notice last season we started to have quite a few injuries, and we're, we're, we're seeing them pile up already this year. All right, good block. All right, there's a nice little block away. 
Olander gets it, turns the corner, puts on the Jets, I guess, into the box, lays it off. There is the score. Carl Evans in the right place, his third goal of the season. Olander did a lot of that by himself. Very good movement to get up into the box. He beat two guys, and then good vision to pick out that pass. Evans sat down in a space and gave him the spot to move it to, and that is huge. Uh, show some passion. We've already lost focus here. And Christopher Moeller Daly puts one in. They're his first goal of the season to get one back. Mm, who was that? That was, uh, come on, click on him. What? Pallison, he, uh, he drifted behind him, basically gave him a free header. That is not good. All right, we're back to being composed. Let's show some passion again. Whoa. If that would have been on target. All right, Evans looks like he has shook off that injury. Uh, who do we want to sub out? Tell you what, just... Let's bring Daniel England on. Ah, no, no, no. I'm going to bring Ollie Jacobson, and then we'll bring Georgievich in. I like him in that defensive mid spot. Tighten up. We're already playing cautious. We're not closing down tightly or anything. Oh, nice little knock away. Oh, that was dangerous. Oh, no. Good save by Kostman. Sorensen should have put that in. It was a good defensive play, but, boy, he, he put that tap right into the way of that guy. Oh, my goodness. All right. Come on, defense. Hold him up. Well, there's a little flick away. Good job. Oh, no, that's not good. Oh, they called advantage, and we get it. I'm surprised he's not calling that back since we turned the advantage pretty quickly. Oh, uh, and we lost it. Good header. Oh, man. Flipped over the goal by Kosman with the save. Can we hold on? All right, let's... Uh, Let's go into our tactics here. All right, let's go up so, to some time wasting. And I want tighter marking down the stretch here. All right, Kosman hauls that in. Hoops it out. Larson. Oh. Okay, I was like, where the hell is he kicking the ball? That wasn't good. All right, good header. Keeps it going the other way. Come on, blow the whistle. Good job. There we go. All right, we hold on for a 2-1 win. Could have probably been an easier win. We dominated this match, though. I think we take that and are very happy with it. Hammerby drew in their opening match. Uh, I am going to be passionate. Well done, guys. A good win. All right. So that puts us into second to open the season. So let's come back for... Let's come back pretty quickly. Uh, well... Gotoberg is there. They, I think they got promoted. I think they got promoted up, right? Yeah, Gotoberg got promoted. They're actually picked to finish ninth. Wow. We're picked to finish 12th in the preseason. Brahma Pajamas picked to go down. That's, that's not good because I thought we improved the squad this year. Um, and we're still not up anywhere near mid-table where they want us to be. 
But Gothenburg, I'm thinking because Gothenburg was a team that we've challenged a lot. Why don't we come back for Brahma Pajama and Gothenburg, two of our old, uh, you know, um, what's the other division down? I only played there one year. The Super Rattan, that's right. That was the league that we played them in. Why don't we come back for those two for our next match, Brahma Pajama, Gothenburg. Uh, that'll give us, that's a pretty rough run. Elf, Elfsburg, Helsenburg, and Hammersby. Hammerby. Um, oof. So we'll play those three off camera. We'll see you guys for the next episode. Uh, remember, I am going to renumber these. So this is season six, episode one. Next episode will be season six, episode two. And we'll just go that way. Have a good one, guys. We will see you next time. Take care. Bye.